y'all. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Favor with your host and prophet, Joanne Gabriel. Stop playing with it. Stop playing with it. Hey, y'all, what's up? We're here with episode 22, and it's going to be straight fire. So you guys see the title of this episode. We're here with episode two of the Demonology series, Demonology 101. So class is in session. Get your notebook, get your Bible, get your pens, get your highlighters, because today's message is straight fire. I don't even think a lot of people have taught on this spirit. You know what I mean? Like some of you guys are looking at this title like, bro, what is the spirit of sabotage? We're going to break it down. That's what I'm saying. Faith and favor is different. God's hand is on this ministry and he gives us fire revelation. So I need everyone to get their notebooks out, get a highlighter, get a pen, get your Bibles, and let's just get into it. Okay, wait, let me calm down. Let me do some announcements first. So we just concluded our June 2024 Divine Prosperity Fast, right? We did it from June 16th to June 18th, and it was so powerful. I highly encourage you, if you did not do the fast live with us as a ministry, you need to go do it by yourself. The teachings, the revelations, like God told us where we are in the book of Revelation, the end times, what he's doing in this hour, all these things. Straight fire, guys. And I'm telling you, going into July, we need to be in the mercy of God, right? Because what God is going to do in the second half of this year, people are not ready. It's going to get scary, right? It's either going to be divine prosperity, which is what we've been fasting for, or you're going to get divine judgment, right? So you want to be on the right side of history. So I highly encourage you, if you did not do the fast, from June 16th to June 18th, you need to do it on your own. You need to do it before our next fast, right? So our next fast is going to be July 16th, 17th, and 18th. It's always the 16th, 17th, and 18th, y'all. So in July, we're going to be fasting again for three days. Um, I already, I know the prophetic word for the season of divine prosperity, it was March 19th to June 20th. But if you guys follow me, you know, you watch my lives and stuff. God had me write down in my prophetic journal that he wants us to fast in July and October, right? So we're going to fast next month in July, um, August and September. I'm going to be on sabbatical. You know, I'm going to rest, right? Because when you're in ministry, you need to take time to rest, right? Because on the seventh day, God rested. So God has given me two months to rest. Then we're going to be back at it fasting in October. So you guys need to lock in with this ministry. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok at faithandfavor.min. Go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube. Go ahead and join the Discord also. I'm going to put the link in the description box. So what the enemy meant for evil during the last fast, God turned it for our good. So now we have a whole community on Discord. People talk about, you know, testimonies and things they're going through and what prayers to pray and all that. So if you have questions and you want to talk to people, join the Discord, right? And I just want to say this now. I have so many emails, so many DMs of people, Joanne, this was my dream, Joanne, what should I do, Joanne? Guys, please don't make me into an idol. Turn to the Holy Spirit before you. Please don't do it, right? Because I want to be transparent. I'm running this ministry that's almost full time. I have a full time job. I have like I'm literally doing so many things. I have my own life. I need to work on my own relationship with God. Right. I'm not a perfect person. So I'm really going to encourage people to stop DMing me and emailing me very specific things about their lives, because it's like ask the Holy Spirit, right? Like, please ask the Holy Spirit, because I just don't have time. Right? I don't have time. So, yeah, guys, join the fast for July. If you didn't fast with us in June, do the fast on your own. Email me and I can send you the homework as well. Join the Discord. Um, and yeah. All right. So those were all of the announcements. So before we get into the episode, let's just, you know, open it up with some prayer. So let's just go ahead and pray. Father God, we just want to say thank you for today. Thank you for waking us up to see this day, Lord God. Thank you for the breath in our lungs. Thank you for your mercies that are new every morning, Father God. We just say thank you for the gift of faith and favor, Lord God. We say thank you for the covenant you've made with us, Lord God. According to Psalms 5, verse 12, and according to Ephesians 6, 6 Lord God, we are divinely protected by your shield of faith and favor, Lord God. So we dwell in this covenant now, Father God. We ask that you would defend the covenant you made with us, Lord God. And we just say thank you for your promises, Lord God. Thank you that all of your promises are yes and amen, and you do not go back on your word, Lord God. We thank you that the hand of the Lord, that your hand is here on faith and favor, Lord God. Right now, Holy Spirit, I invite you into this moment to speak through me. Use me as a spokesperson for the kingdom of God, Father God. I, I, I decrease so that you may increase in this moment in the name of Jesus. 
all of this, this whole platform, everybody, it doesn't matter if you're not glorified, Lord God. So I just pray that this episode would edify your children. I come against spiritual deafness and blindness now in the name of Jesus. I break those things now. I break the spirit of deafness and the spirit of blindness now in the name of Jesus. Your sons and daughters will see in the spiritual realm. They will hear in the spiritual realm. They will understand the spirits and the things happening in the spiritual realm in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We say, we say thank you for guiding me to do this um, this series on demonology, Lord God. We thank you for Demonology 101. We say thank you for opening up our eyes and our ears to understand what's going on in the spirit because the spirit world is the parent to this physical world, Lord God. So again, Holy Spirit, have your way. Do what you want to do in this episode. And I just say thank you, Lord God, for the gift of faith and favor. Thank you for the, your sons and daughters tuning in, Father God. I pray that you would continue to bestow blessings and show up in their lives in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray that everybody would gain wisdom and knowledge from this episode, Lord God. So we just say thank you. We pray for your perfect will to be done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed amen and amen. Okay, y'all, so we just opened up with some prayers. So welcome officially to episode two of Demonology 101. So this series, Demonology 101, is a series where we're going to be learning about demons, unclean spirits, you know, familiar spirits, every demon, every spirit from the camp of hell. That's what we're going to be learning in this series, right? Why has God called me to start this series? Because in the last days, right, we're in the last days, we're in the days of Noah, wickedness is at an all-time high, right? The enemy is going to keep doing what he needs to do, right? Because it's been prophesied that the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, has to come to earth before Jesus returns, right? So we're in the last days. So, so many demons, so many evil spirits are gonna be running rampant in the world, waging warfare against us, the kingdom of light, right? And this is why we need to learn about demons. So we know how to fight effectively, right? So this series is literally just exposing demons and their tactics so we can overcome them. You got what I'm saying? So this is so fire. I don't know why Christians are like, why are people obsessed with demons? Why do we have to learn about demons? That's why you're getting harassed every night. That's why your whole life is in shambles, right? Because people don't understand warfare. So this is a warfare series. So let's just get started. So this episode is going to be about the spirit of sabotage, the spirit of sabotage. Now, God gave me multiple dreams about this spirit in the May fast, right? I didn't, I didn't have the, the name of the spirit, but I just kept seeing so much sabotage, so much betrayal, right, in my dreams, right? And then I kept asking the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? And God finally told me it's the spirit of sabotage. Sorry, I had to go get my Bible. I was like, where's my Bible? <laughs> so before we get into the word, let's quickly define, right, what sabotage is, right? So before we get into the deep spiritual stuff, let's just understand what sabotage is in the natural. You get what I'm saying? So what is sabotage? I looked it up on Google, right? Sabotage is to deliberately destroy damage or obstruct something especially for military advantage another definition said sabotage is to damage or destroy weapons in order to prevent the success of an enemy or competitor right so this this you guys see where this is going to go right so the spirit of sabotage or sabotage right is to destroy something that you see as a threat, right? So you're trying to stop the advancement of your opponent who you're fighting against, right? So we know as children of God, we're fighting the kingdom of darkness. We're fighting against Satan and his, his demons and all the unclean spirits and all of that, right? So now you guys see that this is warfare. The literal definition of sabotage had war terms. It said for military advantage to prevent the success of the enemy, right? So I'm telling you this series is straight warfare, right? So we need to understand warfare. So sabotage, you sabotage something to stop the advancement of your enemy, right? So that's what the, that's, that's the worldly definition of sabotage, right? Now this is what the Holy Spirit told me. Taking this definition into account, right? The Holy Spirit said, Satan uses the spirit of sabotage to destroy something he sees as a threat to his kingdom. So guys, this spirit that Satan is using, you need to write this down. Why is Satan using this spirit? Why? To destroy something he sees as a threat to his own kingdom, right? So we're fighting against the kingdom of darkness. Again, if you're with God, you're going to have so much warfare, right? Because you're really with God. So you need to ask yourself, right? If you're claiming you're a Christian and you love Jesus and you're on fire for God, but you have no warfare, 
you're on the wrong side, right? This is why I keep saying you need to pick a side because all of the children of God were all complaining warfare, so much things are going on, warfare. I don't understand how the people that are also claiming they're Christians, they're just living like, oh, I don't get any warfare, everything's chill. That means you're on the wrong side because why would the enemy fight you if you're not on his side? He's only gonna fight people that's not on his side. Do you get what I'm saying? So if you're on the enemy's side, right now you're not experiencing any warfare. So if you're watching this now and you haven't experienced any type of warfare, you need to repent and choose to come to the kingdom of light. You get what I'm saying? So Satan uses the spirit of sabotage to destroy something he sees as a threat to his kingdom, right? So now let's go to the word for this. Where can we see an example of the spirit of sabotage? So I need everybody to open up their Bibles to Psalm 55, Psalm 55, right? So this is where we're going to see a good example of this. Now, I do want to give credit where credit is due. So I have a mentor. His name is Prophet Odalyn, and you guys need to go follow his ministry, Straight Fire. Um, it's the Ark of the Covenant Deliverance Ministry. So he's a deliverance minister, but he's also a prophet. And, you know, I was, you know, we were on a phone call and I was just telling him all the warfare I was going through and he was giving me, you know, wisdom and advice and, you know, guidance and stuff like that. And he literally told me the spirit of sabotage is literally trying to ruin one of my friendships. Right. So that's that's the revelation he gave me. And it's so funny because he did a teaching on the spirit of sabotage and he got the example from Psalms 55. So he led me to read Psalms 55. Right. So I want to give credit where credit is due. But. Outside of this scripture, God gave me two other examples. So today we're going to go through three different examples of the spirit of sabotage. We just talked about the definition. Then we're going to talk about the actual spirit, you know, what it does, how it manifests in your life and the natural. Then we're going to talk about two instances where the spirit of sabotage won and where the spirit of sabotage lost. Right. So and then we're going to talk about how to win, how to conquer the spirit of sabotage. Right. So this is going to be straight fire. So we're here in Psalms 55, y'all. Psalms 55, and we're going to read verses 12 through 14. So it says here, this is David speaking, right? If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it was you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, underline that, with whom I enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. So y'all, in the scripture, right, David is complaining, he's crying out to God and just expressing his heart. And he's saying, Lord, if this was somebody that hated me, you know, somebody that didn't like me, an enemy was rising up against me and insulting me, I would be fine with it, right? This is what David is saying. But he said, no, it was my friend, my companion, someone that I enjoyed sweet fellowship with, right? So in other words, David is complaining about a friend, right? Somebody that he prayed with, somebody that he fasted with, somebody that he seeks God with, right? And he's complaining because this friend is now rising up against him in judgment and insulting him and just filing all these false accusations at him, right? This is what David is complaining about. So when you read this, you're like, how does this happen, right? How can a friend just turn on you so quick like this? That's how you know it's a spirit, y'all. When anything is happening in your life and in the natural, it's just not making sense. It's not making sense at all. It's spiritual. So for example, right, let's say, you know, you're, you're in the gym, you have good health, all this stuff, and then randomly you go to the doctor, oh, you have a tumor. Out of nowhere. It's spiritual, y'all. Even, y'all, even diseases. Diseases are spiritual. When Jesus was healing the sick, healing the blind, right, what did he say? He said, your sins are forgiven, and then they were healed. He didn't say, oh, I'm going to touch this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to manipulate your heart, I'm going to manipulate your retina. He didn't do that. He said, because of your, your, because your sins have been forgiven, you are healed, right? So it's spiritual. Even diseases are spiritual, y'all. So when things are happening in your life randomly, and, it, and you're blindsided, it doesn't make sense, and you're like, bro, how could this be happening? It's spiritual. So David is saying here, how can somebody that I prayed and fasted with and communed with just turn on me like this? The Holy Spirit said it's the spirit of sabotage. So if you go to verse 20, you're going to read that. It says, my companion attacks his friends and he violates his covenant. His talk is smooth as butter. Yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords, right? So, so here in verse 20 and 21, it's talking about the heart again. This is why I keep saying, in the last days, in these last days, 
God is looking at the heart, right? In 1 Samuel, when um, Samuel went to go anoint David, right? The Lord, the Lord said, I didn't pick this one. Man looks at the physical, but I look at the heart, right? So God is looking at the heart, y'all. So spiritually, there are spirits that are manipulating people's heart postures, right? To betray their friends. This is the spirit of sabotage at work. This is the spirit of sabotage. So what is the fruit? What is the fruit that this spirit is operating in your life? Betrayal of friendships, betrayal of friendships, right? Because we just read that the friend has now turned on David and has violated the covenant, right? So let's define the spirit of sabotage in the spiritual realm. I gave you guys the worldly, you know, Google definition. This is the definition the Holy Spirit gave me for the spirit of sabotage. So write this down. The spirit of sabotage is a demonic spirit that ruins connections and relationships that are God ordained. God ordained. Everyone needs to highlight and circle God ordained. This is not your, your baby daddy, right? This is not the man that keeps abusing you. This is not the friends that keep gossiping about you and they don't know God. These are God ordained relationships, right? That this spirit is trying to ruin and try to break up. You get what I'm saying? So what did the Holy Spirit tell me? I said, said, I said, why? I said, why is the enemy coming after connections, coming after relationships like this? Like, why is it such a big deal? The Holy Spirit said this. God uses our friendships, our relationships, our partnerships to advance his kingdom, which makes friendships and connections and partnerships, all these things, weapons against the enemy. You get what I'm saying? So now you see how this ties to the natural definition of the spirit of sabotage, where it said, the sabotage is to damage or destroy weapons in order to prevent the success of the enemy, right? It's also to obstruct something for military advantage, right? So God is saying, the Holy Spirit said, God uses our friendships, our relationships, our marriages, our connections to advance his kingdom. So it's a weapon against the kingdom of darkness, right? Because this is two kingdoms fighting. And we already know the enemy has lost, right? He's already lost and we're just fighting for nothing. That's why it's so dumb. He wants to keep attacking us, but it's so dumb because you've already lost, bro. But we're still fighting, right? So all of, all of our relationships, all of our connections are used by God to advance his kingdom. It's all very strategic. It's all very military style. You know, do you guys get what I'm saying? So the spirit of sabotage is a demonic spirit that wants to ruin and break up God-ordained relationships, right? And this is what we read in Psalms 55, right? Because again, this was David's friend. And he said in verse, in verse 14, that they enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God. So if we apply that today, right? This is a friend that you go to church with, you fast with them, you pray with them, and then all of a sudden they're coming after you, they're insulting you, they're, they're doing a smear campaign about you. That's not normal. That's how you know it's a spirit, y'all. So, so from Psalms 55, we we're able to identify with David that a spirit of sabotage was at work in his life. So y'all, let me just touch on this a little more. How do you know that this spirit is at work in your life? What is the fruit, right, of this spirit, right? Because in the last episode, we talked about how are you going to bear the fruits of the spirit, right, the Holy Spirit, is when you're attached to Jesus Christ, when you're attached to the vine, right? So when you're not attached to Jesus, you're attached to the enemy, another spirit is going to produce fruit in your life. Oh my gosh, this is good. I just got this now. So because some people are attached to, you know, the, the demonic kingdom, all these different spirits are operating through them and it's now bearing fruit in their lives. So what is the fruit of the spirit of sabotage in the lives of, of the believers and the lives of, you know, people here on earth? Number one, you're going to have betrayal of friendships that you know are ordained by God. So you're going to start falling out with all of your friends that you know God sent you to be friends with them. These are your covenant friendships. These are your David and Jonathan friendships. This is like your Daniel friends, y'all. The friends that you know are from God. I feel the Holy Spirit. The friends that you know are from God. You're going to start having unexpected betrayal. They're going to do things against you. They're going to say, I don't want to be your friend. Just randomly out of nowhere. Again, it doesn't make sense. It's a spirit. The second fruit of this spirit is your friends, right, are going to be talking so nice to you. They're like, Joe, I love you. I love you. You're my girl. You're my girl. But inside, there's jealousy. There's animosity, you know, greed, all these different things. So in their, in their spirit, in their heart, right, they're at war. It's a war. But from their mouth, 
they're talking sweet. And I want to say this because I don't want to paint your friends as bad people. Some of your friends don't even know that this spirit is operating through them. That's why your friends can hype you up and love you and do all these things. And then out of nowhere, there's just a flip. Out of nowhere, y'all, because it's a spirit. And they don't even know that the spirit is operating through them. And this is why I keep saying it's very, very important that your inner circle, your friends all have the Holy Spirit. People get mad when I say I only want to be friends with people that have the Holy Spirit. This is why, right? Because now all of these demonic spirits can operate through you to come disrupt my life when I'm in right standing with God. Do you get what I'm saying? So the second fruit of this spirit is friends, you know, hyping you up. They're talking sweet to you. They love you. But out of nowhere, they're raging war in the spirit. They're confused, right? The third, the third fruit is there's going to be a hostile encounter, right? This doesn't mean you have to fight anybody, but like with their words, you know, you guys get in a heated argument out of nowhere. Just, you know, all of those heated arguments, a lot of arguing, a lot of back and forth. That is another fruit that this spirit is at work. And then again, the last one is unexpected animosity. This, this is what makes it, this is what will set it apart, y'all unexpected you were blindsided this is what happened to david david said bro this was somebody that i fasted with my close friend my co companion i made a covenant with him he was my covenant friend and now he's turning up against me out of nowhere like you just wake up and one day they're fighting you right unexpected so that's how you're gonna know that the spirit of sabotage is operating in your life and i want to keep reiterating this this is not about your toxic relationships this is not about your toxic friendship this is not about you know all the worldly people you you were friends with and you're no longer friends these are for the god ordained friendships people you know are from god people that you know are going to help you advance in your purpose people that you're supposed to help advance in their purpose you know what i mean these type of friendships i feel the holy spirit this is who the spirit of sabotage is after so we need to be on high alert because the lord is using our relationships our partnerships our connections as as literal ammunition against the enemy and that's why the enemy is sending this spirit to ruin all of your connections y'all so the spirit of sabotage is very dangerous it's very sneaky right so y'all i just talked about how this spirit can operate through your friends you know basically the friends that are from god they start turning up against you right so the spirit is operating through your friends and they don't know it but just like i told you guys in episode one monitoring spirits if you haven't watched monitoring spirits you need to go watch it now or watch it after this episode but in that episode i laid a lot of foundational principles we need to know about the spiritual realm so I'm not going to repeat myself. I'm going to assume that everybody watching this has watched episode one because I laid a lot of foundational things about the spiritual realm there. But I'm just going to say now, the only way that spirits can operate in your life is through an open door, right? Demons can only come in if there's an open door, if they have a legal right. The spiritual realm is all about legalities and laws and do you have the right to do this and do you have the clearance to do this? That's what the spiritual realm is. It's all about laws. And that's why you need to break covenants. You need to repent and fast. Go to the courtrooms of heaven. Because it's literally, you're literally in a lawsuit with the enemy, right? So, how does the spirit of sabotage get access into your life? You need an open door that gives the spirit legal right, right? So, when I was studying for this, I said, Lord, this spirit was operating in my life. I was asking Prophet Odalyn. I was so confused. I felt so betrayed. I said, God, but how did this spirit come in? Like, how did it have to come in? Because I know, right, it had to be through an open door, right? And the truth is, I'm not in any, you know, crazy sin. You know, every day we sin, but I'm not in a big sin where all these demons just be coming in. So I'm like, God, how did the spirit come in, right? So what did the Holy Spirit tell me? Through Prophet Odalin, right, my mentor that I was talking to, he said in the spirit, he can see that for me, for, for my case, the spirit of sabotage is generational. That was the first time I ever heard such a thing. I said, wow. So the spirit of sabotage was running. That's what I'm saying it was because it's been conquered. The spirit of sabotage was running in my bloodline from generation to generation. I said, wow. So when the Holy Spirit revealed this to me through my mentor, Prophet Odalin, I started, you know, looking for a pattern, right? Because if it's generational, it's a pattern, right? So I started looking for a pattern of how the enemy tried to disrupt connections and relationships that are God ordained. And I, I see it a lot in my immediate family. I see it a lot. Um, just, I see it a lot, right? And I started seeing a pattern. So guys, the first open door is it's generational, right? 
So because of something your ancestors did, your great, great grandparents, your grandma, your grandpa, your aunt, your uncle, right? From the 1970s, right? If somebody <laughs> did something, they committed a sin and this spirit came in, that's why it's now riding in your bloodline and it's manifesting in every generation. You get what I'm saying? So the first open door is it's generational and somebody in your bloodline opened the door, right? And this is why I keep saying we need to be repenting and fasting on behalf of our bloodline all the way to Adam and Eve because we don't know what these people did. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sitting here like, bro, why is this spirit affecting my life? Not knowing is because of somebody from hundreds of years ago that I'm affect it's affecting me today, right? And again, some Christians, I don't believe in generational curses. If you believe in generational blessings, you have to believe in generational curses. Like you cannot, you can't pick one, right? And this is the problem with American Christianity and all these cotton candy, sugar-coated sermons, right? Because people don't want to talk about all these things. Your life is in shambles today because of generational curses, because all these familiar spirits, all of these spirits are coming because of open doors that your ancestors did, right? They opened all these doors because of sin, human sacrifice, murder, adultery, all these things, right? And now this spirit has legal right to go from generation to generation. Why? Because nobody rose up to be the repairer of the breach according to Isaiah 58 and fast, right? That's why the spirit still had legal right till how many weeks ago until I broke the covenant. Why? Because nobody in my bloodline had the revelation, wanted to die to their flesh to the Isaiah 58 fast, right? So again, that's a lot. 99% of the stuff we deal with in this life is spiritual. And even if you can't trace it back to something you did today, it was somebody in your bloodline. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, y'all. As I was editing this episode, the Holy Spirit wants me to make this slight correction. So throughout the episode, I'm going to keep talking about friends and, you know, friendships. But in reality, this spirit is also after marriages and relationships and partnerships in terms of careers. Right. So these are these are all your different types of connections. So I just want to make that clear. Even if you're feeling like, oh, there's no sabotage in my friendships, there could be sabotage in your marriage, in your relationships, in your partnerships, you know, all these different things, guys. So I need to make that correction and make it very clear. And you're going to see in the example that I talk about first, it's about a marriage, right? So I just kept saying friendship because in my case, it was about a friendship. But this spirit is in operation in all types of relationships. The second open door, right, or actually there's three more. The next three open doors are these ones, right? So the Holy Spirit showed me through the story that we're going to go to next that these are three open doors that allows this spirit of sabotage to come in specifically, specifically for the spirit of sabotage. These are three open doors. So number one is jealousy, jealousy. Number two is lust. Number three is greed. And we're going to see all of this at work in the, in the, in the story that we're going to go to next, right? So why is this important guys? Because again, this spirit is coming after relationships, right? So if the enemy can cause you to be jealous of your friend that's doing well, advancing the kingdom, right? It's their season of prosperity. It's their season of harvest because they've been fasting, they've been working, they've been surrendering to God and God sees their heart, right? Because it's now time for your friend to excel and elevate. If the enemy can cause you to be jealous of this friend, you, you he's already won, right? So that's why jealousy is an open door because as you see your friend progressing and winning and all these things and you guys are in a friendship, if you allow the spirit of jealousy to creep in, the spirit of sabotage can walk right in, right? It's just going to sabotage the whole friendship. Why? Because of jealousy, right? So we're going to see very good examples of this, y'all, in, in a second, right? The second open door was lust, right? If you're lusting over all these material things, right? It's not, it's not all about sexual immorality. In this case, it's about money and material things, right? So again, let's say your friend is doing well. Well, so let's say your friend is doing well. You know, they're married. Their ministry is doing good. They have a new car. They're just doing well, right? And you start coveting and lusting over the things that person has, right? So that is another open door for the spirit of sabotage, right? Because you're going to want to sabotage their happiness, their elevation, right? In reality, to get your own. But you're just hurting yourself. Because, it, because again, these relationships, you guys are meant to feed off of each other. You guys are meant to work together in harmony, right? So if one person is not working, so if one person is against the friend, 
You guys can't work together. So you guys are pulling both of you guys back. This is good. Help me to say this, Holy Spirit. Basically, what the Spirit is telling me now is there's some friendships, right? You're only going to elevate as much as you help your friend. Help me, Holy Spirit. So, so your elevation, your prosperity is actually tied to your friend, to this relationship, to this connection. You're getting favored because you're connected to this person and vice versa. But when you guys separate, right, you guys decide to fall out because of jealousy, because of whatever. Now, both of you guys will not reach the ceiling that God has called you to break. The glass ceiling that God has called you to break, none of you guys will reach it because you guys are not working in harmony. God ordained it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God ordained it that you, you guys together will break the ceiling. One person alone will not break it. Somebody needs to hear this revelation. So jealousy, this is why I keep saying, even in episode one with monitoring spirits, jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. Saul was so jealous of David, y'all. So jealousy is so dangerous. And again, jealousy is a murderous spirit. This is why, girl, this is why I keep saying, I don't want to be friends with people that are going to be jealous of me. I don't want it. I don't need you around me, bro. I don't need it, right? So jealousy is dangerous lusting over all these things right you want more followers you want more of this you want all of that will cause you to sabotage relationships and the last one is greed so greed ties into lust right so you just want more gluttony overindulgence you want more of this more of that more of that i want more recognition than my friend i want more followers than my friend i want more of this i want to go to a better school than her i want to just all of this greed these are the open doors the holy spirit gave me y'all so for the spirit of sabotage specifically right it could be generational and the open doors that, you know, people open for this spirit to usually come in is jealousy, lust, and greed, right? So I'm going to show you guys this in the text in a story, and it's going to be so, so good. Okay, guys, so let's all turn to Judges 16, Judges 16, so we can see uh, a scenario of where the spirit of sabotage won, right? So the kingdom of darkness actually won against the kingdom of light. But again, this is just all hypothetical, right? Because at the end of the day, the enemy lost, right? He, he, he's never a winner. He's a loser. But in this story, the Holy Spirit, God gave us this example so that we can study, study how the spirit of sabotage can win, right? So the spirit of sabotage can win if you're not equipped with the armor of God. If you're not learning about warfare, the spirit of sabotage is going to win in your life. It is. The enemy is a loser, but the spirit is going to win in your life if you do not have revelation and knowledge of the spiritual realm. So this is fire. So let's all go to Judges 16. All right. So Judges 16 is the story of Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. This is a popular story. But again, I'm telling you, this, this ministry is different because who has taught about the spirit of sabotage? Through the story of Samson and Delilah, nobody, nobody has done it. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is cooking in this ministry, y'all. So let's get into it. So this is going to be a story, an example of where the spirit of sabotage won. The spirit of sabotage won. So let's go ahead and read Judges 16, verses 4 through 5. All right, so it says here, Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we can tie him up and subdue him, each of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver, right? Right. So this is an example of greed and lust over money, right? So we all know the story, right? Basically, Samson was a strong man. He had long hair. He had locks, or I think braids. And God anointed him from the womb that all of his strength, that his spirit would dwell in Samson's hair, right? So Samson had strength from the Holy Ghost, supernatural strength because of the anointing on his hair, right? So, so the, the Philistines at this point, Israel was fighting the Philistines, right? Israel was against the Philistines and the Philistines was always attacking Israel. Like, bro, the Philistines were just annoying. So the Philistines and Israel were, you know, at war, basically. Right. So the Philistines were trying to figure out how they can defeat Samson, the most powerful man in the Bible at this point. How can they defeat him? What did they do, guys? Again, let's take it back to the definition of the spirit of sabotage. The spirit of sabotage was working through the Philistines to disrupt 
the marriage of Samson and Delilah. Samson and Delilah. Do you hear what I'm saying? So this is a big, this is an example of the spirit of sabotage at work. Samson and Delilah got married. You know, they're married. They fell in love or whatever. The Philistines came, right? The Philistines are the spirit of sabotage. They came to Delilah and said, hey, girl, if you just show us how we can defeat your husband, we're just going to give you all this money. And we know that Delilah agreed to this, this arrangement, which just shows she was greedy and lustful over money. Because the truth is, as I was reading this, I was like, she's so dumb. She's so dumb because literally she was married to the strongest, the most highly esteemed man in the Bible at this time, Samson, right? Like Samson literally killed a lion with his bare hands. Samson was that guy. You were married to him. You decided to forfeit your whole marriage for 1,100 shekels of silver. You know, it doesn't make sense, right? It's just, this just doesn't make sense. So it's a spirit. It is a spirit, especially because Delilah kept saying, oh, I love you, Samson. It just doesn't make sense. Again, this ties to Psalms 55, right? Your friend will talk smooth to you, but in their heart it's war, right? So Delilah was talking smooth to Samson. I love you, Samson. You my man, you my man. But she was making a deal with the enemy, right? She didn't know the spirit of sabotage was working through her. This is good, y'all. This is good. So again, it said here, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength. What is it to lure? Oh my gosh, I just got this revelation now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To lure somebody is to, you know, like sing a lullaby, sing a song that they like, you know, soothe somebody, subdue somebody through your speech so that they, they have their guards down and they're vulnerable. That's what it means to lure somebody, like to lure somebody in a trap. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As I'm saying this, the Holy Spirit gave me a vision of a siren. I need to do a teaching on the Marine Kingdom. I think that's going to be next. Let me know, Father. Let me know. But I'm seeing a vision of a siren to lure somebody, right? It's just like what sirens do. They're on the water. They're beautiful. You know, they're cute or whatever. And the pirates or whoever are on the sea. And they start hearing this beautiful music, a beautiful melody, right? They're singing. The sirens are singing this beautiful song. And the men on the ship are like, oh, my gosh, where is that singing coming from? Oh, she's really pretty. Oh, what's that girl doing in the water? Then they go because they're enticed and their guard is down because practically, why would you go? <laughs> why would you go near a woman that's in the middle of the ocean? Just just there singing. It just doesn't make sense, right? This is all spiritual. Come on. This is all spiritual. So the Holy Spirit is showing me to lure somebody is literally to be like a siren. You're singing this beautiful song, beautiful notes to lure your, 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 your target into a trap so you can destroy them, right? Because that's what sirens do. They sing, na, 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 and then the men come, and then they take them to the bottom of the ocean and kill them. This is literally what Delilah, so the Holy Spirit is, is even telling me now, it's not only the spirit of sabotage with Delilah, it's also the siren spirit. Hey, this is good. This is good. This is not in my notes. Delilah also had the spirit of a siren because she was luring Samson to tell her how they can destroy him. This is good, y'all. This is good. So Delilah, all this sweet talk, all this I love you, I love you, just to destroy Samson. Because of what? What was the open door? Lust and greed. So now let's go to Judges 16, verse 6, right? So it said here, So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength how you can be tied up and subdued, right? So tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. So obviously, you know, Samson wasn't that bright because if somebody is asking you that question, that's a red flag, right? So this is a red flag, but Samson was so in love, right? And he just looked past the red flags. So this is for somebody as well, right? This has nothing to do with this message, but some of you guys... <laughs> are staying in relationships again. These relationships are thorns. They're not God ordained. And there's obvious red flags and you're still staying in them. Right now you look like Samson and you look dumb. And the Holy Spirit is saying, you need to leave now. Do not sow amongst thorns, y'all. Do not sow amongst thorns. I just needed to say that. So we can see here, Delilah's asking Samson, you know, how, how can we overpower him? How do you have such great strength, such great power? right? She was asking him this. So I said, okay, this is significant. The Holy Spirit told me, Joanne, 
The Holy Spirit told me, what is the aim of this, of this spirit? Again, we know that the spirit is after relationship and friendships and like God ordained covenants. That's what the spirit is after. But the Holy Spirit gave me another, another revelation through the scripture. The Holy Spirit said, the enemy and the spirit of sabotage is threatened by the glory and anointing that comes from these relationships, right? So again, we understand that the spirit of sabotage is mad and trying to disrupt all the God-ordained relationships. But what makes relationships God-ordained? What makes these relationships so special that the enemy is so mad and trying to ruin the relationships? The Holy Spirit showed me through the scripture. It's the glory and anointing that's on these relationships, right? Because again, we know Samson was anointed with this strength, with this glory, right? So let's go ahead and read this, right? So let's go back. Let's go to Judges 13. This is talking about the birth of Samson. So if you go to Judges 13, let's read from verses 24. So it says here, the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. He grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in this city and between this city and this city, right? So we can read here that as the boy grew older, right? As Samson grew older, the Lord blessed him and the spirit of God began to stir. But where did the spirit stir? Where did the spirit stir? So let's go up to verse five. We're still in Judges 13. Let's read verse five. So an angel appeared to Samson's mother and said this, you will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is a Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb. This is so good. So when I looked up Nazarite, right, when I looked up Nazarite in the, in the, in the concordance, right, in the Hebrew definition, Nazarite means consecrated one, consecrated one. If you guys watched I don't know which episode number it was, but the episode called Being Set Apart. We talked about consecration. We talked about being set apart. So to be a Nazarite is to be the consecrated one. In other words, to be separate, to be a prince, and to be what? Set apart. Set apart. Set apart. So it's the glory of God, the anointing that God placed in Samson's hair, right? The spirit that was stirred up in him that is causing the enemy to be mad and make Delilah come and destroy Samson, right? So in terms of our friendships, right? The Holy Spirit revealed to me that these covenant friendships, these covenant friendships, these Daniel friendships, all of these relationships and connections and partnerships that are ordained by God, God's hand is on these relationships and there's a glory and anointing for these relationships, y'all. So just like with Samson and Delilah, what was Delilah's main goal? To subdue and find out what was making Samson so special? What made him so powerful, y'all? It was because of the anointing and the glory of God that God gave him, right, from the womb. And I need to say this, y'all. Some of you guys are wondering, why can't I have a lot of friends? You know, God doesn't, you know, I just don't have a friend group. I don't have a lot of friends. It seems like I don't have a lot of friends. You're literally set apart. You don't have time to be friends with people that, that is not ordained by God. You know what I'm saying? You don't have time to be in useless friendships. And people won't like what I'm saying, but it's biblical. For people to be useless, it's biblical, right? You can see an example of this with Eli. So Samuel, Samuel the prophet, his sons were useless, right? Because they were priests, but they were defiling the temple and sleeping with the people. And the Lord called them useless, God called them useless. So you can be in useless friendships, useless relationships, like I keep saying, useless partnerships, useless companies. You're doing all these things and it's useless. There's no glory, there's no anointing there, right? So the enemy doesn't care. You are so set apart. You are so set apart that God only wants you to be in relationships and friendships and partnerships that have his glory and his anointing. This is what happens when you're chosen and called by God. If anybody can relate to what I just said, you're chosen by God, right? And this is why for me as a prophet, as somebody chosen by God, I literally do not have time. I don't have the patience. God doesn't even let me be friends with a lot of people. Why? 
Because God only wants me in, in relationships where his glory will shine, where the anointing will flow. You got what I'm saying? That's the only relationships God wants us in, right? Or the chosen ones in, right? You get what I'm saying? So let's go back to Judges 16, verse 6. So we were talking about how Delilah was asking about the great strength, what made Samson so powerful. So I just needed to say this again. The main goal of this spirit, the spirit of sabotage, right, is to hinder and disrupt our relationships. But why is the spirit doing that? To subdue the glory of God. To subdue the anointing from God. You see what I'm saying? If you guys are listening to any sermons, any teachings, and it doesn't, it doesn't point back to God, it doesn't point back to Jesus, it doesn't point back to the glory of God, you need to question who you're listening to. Every teaching should point you back to Jesus, should point you back to the glory of God. So the main goal of the spirit of sabotage, again, which is from the, from the kingdom of darkness, from Satan, is to subdue the glory of God. Because again, that's why we're in warfare right now. All the enemy wants to do is make God look dumb, make him look not as powerful, make him look stupid, right? And that's why he took one third of the angels with him, right? Because he somehow convinced the angels that God wasn't as glorious, wasn't as powerful, wasn't as, you know, beautiful as he is, right? This is what we're in. This is war. So it's not even about us. This is why I keep saying it's not about what's happening in the physical. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about the glory of God. It's about the spirit of God in our lives that the enemy is mad. So the spirit of sabotage wants to subdue the glory of God. Subdue the glory of God. Now, I, I also have this section that I need to talk about. So when I found out, you know, this revelation, the Holy Spirit started revealing to me where glory can be found, right? Where can glory be found? So this is kind of this is kind of a different segment. We're not going to be talking about relationships here. I'm just going to be talking about you guys as individuals, right? Because again, God chooses two people to be friends, right? So you have to be your own individual. The other person has to be their own person. And then together, you guys' glory and anointing together is what will cause you to break the glass ceilings, which will cause you guys to elevate. You know what I'm saying? So first we need to assess where can glory be found? Where can your glory be found? Where can your friend's glory be found, right? So the Lord took me to Matthew 2, 2, Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. The first place where you can find glory, God's glory, is your star, your star, your star, your star. So let's go there now. This is going to be a very good revelation for a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys have never heard this, but it's going to be so good. So Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. So this is about the birth of Jesus, right? The birth of Jesus. We know that somehow the wise men were able to look at a star and say, oh, the next king of Israel is coming. The next king is coming, right? So let's go ahead and read this. Matthew chapter 2, verse 2. So, okay, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and we have come to worship him, right? So let's, let's really dissect this passage. Wise men looked at the sky. They saw a star. And from the star, they were able to recognize, oh, this is who the star is connected to. It's connected to, to, to this baby boy. And from the star, we can also tell that he's going to be the next king of the Jews from a star. Y'all, this is spiritual. Come on. This is spiritual. This is spiritual. So the wise men were able to see from the star of Jesus that he was going to be the next king from a star. So this is what I'm saying. Your glory is also in your star. People that do horoscopes and astrology and they're looking at the stars, it's literal witchcraft, right? Because they're literally looking at these stars, right? They're looking at these stars to get information about you. This is good. It's not of God. It's not of God. It's not of God. Because again, the wise men, when you look up magi, they were actually magicians. So they were wise men, but they were magicians. Magicians are not of God. Magic is not of God. So again, these wise men were using magic to look at Jesus' star and get information about Jesus. This is good. Y'all, this is why I keep saying everything that you've been taught and learned as a kid. Oh, the wise men were good people and they loved God. In the beginning, 
They were actually working for the enemy. Why? Because again, Herod was the one that sent them to go find out about Jesus. It was Herod who wanted to kill Jesus, right? So the wise men were not good people. This is good. So your glory can be found in your star. Your star symbolizes your destiny, your life, and your future. So your star is literally, so again, I'm not talking about a physical star, but your star in, in the spiritual realm, your star literally is a symbol of your life, of your destiny, of everything God wants you to achieve in your life. It's in your star in the spirit. This is good, y'all. So your glory can be found in your star. So this is why some of us cannot be friends with everybody because our stars are so bright that God does not even allow us to be friends with people that are not serious people in this walk, right? Because it's just going to cause us to compromise and dim our star. You get what I'm saying? So your glory can be found in your star. The second place where your glory can be found is your hair, your hair. Again, we can literally look at this in Samson's life, right? So if we go back to Judges. So yeah, guys, if we go back to Judges 13, we understand that Samson's glory, Samson's strength, Samson's supernatural strength and ability from the spirit came from his hair because God anointed his hair. So what am I saying here? There are certain physical features that you have that are anointed by God. God has placed his hand. He has anointed physical things on your body to reveal his glory. So, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm Samson. I'm not going to say that. But all I'm going to say is that every time I wear my natural hair out, it's like, I don't know. It's like a light is just shining. People are like, Jordan, I love your hair. Your hair this, your hair that. And I'm Nigerian, right? So, so many Nigerians are like, oh, it's not even normal that your hair is this thick and this long. I thought your hair was a wig. Oh my gosh, this is really your hair. Just so much hype about my hair, which is obviously given by God, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying I'm Samson. I'm not saying my supernatural abilities is in my hair. But I'm just saying, right, there are certain features on you that shines forth the glory of God. Some of you guys are naturally gifted with the gift of beauty. Let's just be, let's just be very honest. There's people on this earth that are prettier than other people, right? So when you have this gift of beauty, right? It's literally an, 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 it's literally an anointing from God, right? God wants you to use your beauty for his kingdom, right? So I'm just saying here, the second place where your glory can be found is some physical part of your body, right? Some physical part of your body for Samson, it was his hair, you know, and that's another revelation I got. Now, the third place where God's glory can shine in your life, right, is from your face, your face, your face, your face. This is so good. So if we go to Exodus 34, verse 29, again, guys, this has nothing to do with friendships, but we're talking about individuals right now. And then you know, if your friend has a strong anointing on their hair, or you have a strong anointing in this area, you see why God wants to put you together to elevate. And you see why the enemy's mad, because now it's a double anointing, a double glory of God, and the enemy does not want y'all connected. You get what I'm saying? So we're still talking about individuals, but it still ties to the main message. So if we go to Exodus 34, verse 29, we're going to read about Moses, y'all. You guys should already know where I'm going. This is good. So it says here, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Because he had what? Spoken with the Lord. Moses' face was shining with the glory of God because he had spoken with the Lord. So what does this mean? The people that you see are elevating, they're doing well, favors on their life, everybody loves them, you know, they're just so pretty, and they just seem like God's favorite. Why? Because these people are spending time at the Mount of God. These people are spending time in the secret place, talking to God, communing with God, fasting, dying to their flesh. And when they come out of the fast, blessings are pouring out. Heaven's blessings are pouring out, and you're wondering why, dang, why is Joanne getting so blessed? Why are all these things happening for her when I did the same fast, when I did the same this? Y'all, it's about relationship. You guys don't see everything I do. You need to spend time face to face with God. It's not only when we're doing a fast. You need to fast on your own. You need to read your word on your own. So the glory of God is going to be reflected on your face when you're spending time with God. 
So I read this the other day. You become what you behold. This is good. You become what you behold. If you behold the covenant of Jesus Christ, if you behold the glory of God, if you behold the word of God, there's no way you're not going to shine and have favor in this life. There's no way, right? Because if you apply the principles in this Bible that are conditional, you will reap the fruit and you will get the blessings. You will get the promises of God. You will get your inheritance. But if you're not beholding the Bible, if you're not beholding time with God, if you're not beholding the glory of God, there's nothing shining in your life, right? And people are wondering, why are they more blessed? Why does it seem this? There's more favor here. The secret is they're spending more time in the secret place. They're spending more time with God at the Mount of God. Because remember, when Moses went up to the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights, he didn't eat, he didn't drink. He was fasting in the presence of God for 40 days. Then when he came down, the glory of God showed. So again, when people are jealous and all, it doesn't make sense because people don't know the level of sacrifice you gave for this anointing. The anointing isn't free, right? You get the anointing from God, but you're gonna see Samson paid a price because he didn't wanna listen to the spirit of God, right? So the anointing is not free. You need to steward the anointing, right? So that it can manifest in your life. This is good. So you, your glory, the glory of God can be found in your star, in the spiritual realm. It can be found, you know, in a physical place in your body, right? So like Samson, it was his hair. It can also be found on your face, right? The last place the glory of God can be found in your life is in miracles, 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 miracles. So let's go to Exodus 14, Exodus 14, and let's read about the parting of the Red Sea. Okay, y'all, so Exodus 14, let's read verses 15 through 18. So it says here, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory, glory, through Pharaoh and his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. So glory, glory. God keeps talking about his glory. The truth is, the whole Red Sea parting, and it was so beautiful, it was such a miracle. Every miracle is for the glory of God. God performs miracles for his glory. It's not about us, y'all. Yes, he loves us. Yes, you know, he wants good things for us. But ultimately, all of the miracles that be going on is for the glory of God so that people can see it and wonder, who is the God that you serve? Y'all, again, everything needs to tie back to God. So guys, when I read this, right, glory, the God's glory can shine through miracles. And how, how, how can God perform miracles in your life? You need to have faith. Faith and favor, y'all. You need to have faith. The key to unlocking miracles and favor in your life, you need to have faith. Faith makes ways for miracles, right? Because, the, because Moses had to have faith that if I lift up this stick in my hand, somehow, some way, if I lift up this stick, the whole Red Sea is going to part. He had to have faith, right? Because who, like logically, who would think that would happen? Some of us would be like, bro, I'm not even going to take a risk. We're just going to swim in the Red Sea, right? But Moses had faith. He said, I hear the word of the Lord. I'm going to do it. I don't know if it's going to work. He lifted up the stick, the staff, and the Red Sea parted. So you need to have faith for miracles to work in your life, guys. So why did I talk about glory here? Why did the Holy Spirit have me touch on glory? Because again, the enemy is after the glory of God that is going to shine from these covenant friendships, covenant relationships, covenant marriages as well. Marriages, thank you, Holy Spirit, even marriage. The enemy keeps bringing divide, divorce, and all these things. And people don't want to get married. Why? Because the enemy knows if these people come together in agreement, if these people come together in a God-ordained union, the way they can change the face of the earth, the face of a nation. That's why the enemy is after marriages. That's why the enemy does not want people to get married. That's why all the friendships. Yo, I'm telling you, I'm exposing the enemy today. I'm exposing him, bro. So I was talking about glory because your own individual glory partnered with somebody else's glory, right? That is a double anointing. It's a double glory. God gets a double 
praise, right? God gets glorified two times because of you and your friend, you and your husband, you and your, you know, you, that, that relationship, God gets more glory when you guys are together. Does that make sense? So that's why I was talking about glory in this, in this section, right? So I need to end it up with this. Your glory and your glory partnered with the right relationship is a threat, which is the spirit of sabotage, right? And why is this dangerous, y'all? It's dangerous because the enemy knows when somebody you love, somebody that you fellowship with, somebody that was your best friend from God betrays you, that is a seed of unforgiveness. It's a seed of bitterness, and that will lead you to isolation. You see how all of this works? Because again, unforgiveness is a sin. Bitterness is a sin. And because you have so much trauma from these God-ordained relationships falling apart because of the spirit, but you don't recognize that it's a spirit. Because you have so much trauma, that will lead you into isolation. That will lead you into isolation. And you'll no longer be operating in the glory of God. Does that make sense? So this is very deep. I'm getting a lot. As I'm teaching this now, I'm getting a lot of revelation. A lot of the things I'm saying are not in my notes. But this is very good, y'all. So we needed to talk about glory. Because, because again, the enemy sees your glory as a threat. And when he can disrupt your relationships and make you feel betrayed, it's going to cause you to be in, in sin, right? Which is unforgiveness and bitterness, which will lead you into isolation so that you're no longer building kingdom relationships that God wants to use to advance his kingdom. Y'all, this is deep. So yeah, guys, Samson and Delilah is an example where the spirit of sabotage won, right? Won. So you guys need to go read Judges 13 through 16 on your own. Go and read that story so you can really understand, you know, the story of Samson and Delilah. I'm not going to break it down too much because I feel like everybody knows the story. You know, she kept asking Samson, how are you so strong? Samson kept lying. Then he finally told her the truth. The Philistines came, gouged out his eyes and made him a slave. At the end of the day, he ended up killing everybody, but he also died, right? So it was just a very sad story, right? And that's, that's an example of how the spirit of sabotage won. So now let's go see an example of how the spirit of sabotage lost. Let's go read an example where the spirit of sabotage lost. It took an L. The enemy took a major L. This is good. So we're going to go to 1 Samuel. <laughs> we're always, bro, I'm tell, we're always in 1 Samuel. We're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, y'all. So again, this is the story of David. I'm telling you, y'all, God keeps talking to me about David. Like, God, he just loves 1 Samuel for faith and favor. I don't know what it is. But faith and favor, we're always in 1 Samuel. <laughs> but 1 Samuel chapter 16, let's read verse 13. Verse 13. So it says here, right, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David, upon David. So it's the same language and the same verbiage with, with Samson, right? When Samson, you know, was born and stuff, it said the spirit of the Lord came powerfully on him. Whenever Samson was going to, you know, kill a lion or do something crazy, the spirit of the Lord came forcefully onto him. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. So David was anointed just like with Samuel with the Holy Spirit, right? There was a special anointing on David's life. And this anointing was for him to be the next king of Israel, right? So this was a natural gift from God, an anointing that was a gift from God because God chose David to be the next king of Israel. Why am I talking about this? Let's go to 1 Samuel 18 now. So 1 Samuel 18, you know, David just killed Goliath and he's doing well and everybody loves David, right? So let's read 1 Samuel 18 verses 1 through 4. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in the spirit with David and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. And Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt, right? So everybody that's tuning into faith and favor, you should understand the story of David because we've talked about it and read it so many times, right? But Jonathan is Saul's son, right? Saul was the current king of Israel before David, you know, 
overtook Saul because Saul's disobedience, right? So Saul was the king of Israel. He had a son named Jonathan, right? Now we're reading here that God anointed David to be the next king. Jonathan also knows that David is going to be the next king, which we'll read later. But Jonathan knows David is going to be the next king. Even despite knowing this, Jonathan made a covenant with David. Why is this important, guys? Because let's really think about it. If Saul were to die or Saul, you know, was no longer the king, the next in line is who? Saul's son, his first son. Who was his first son? Jonathan, right? So Jonathan had a really good reason to hate David, to be jealous of David, to even want to kill David. Jonathan had every right to be mad because he's like, bro, how is this man from nowhere, from Jesse, coming to take over my father's kingdom when I'm next in line? Do you get what I'm saying? This is why I keep saying jealousy is so dangerous. Even though Jonathan knew this, instead of being jealous, he made a covenant with David out of love because it kept saying, Jonathan loved David as much as he loved himself. So out of love, Jonathan made a covenant with David, who in reality should have been his enemy. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Everything is spiritual, y'all, because that's what, what makes sense is for Jonathan to be mad. So it doesn't make sense that Jonathan is not mad, right? So it has to be a spirit. The spirit, the fruits of the spirit, love, peace, forbearance, long suffering. Come on, gentleness. Jonathan had the fruits of the spirit and he made a covenant with David out of love, y'all. So this covenant friendship, right? This God-ordained friendship was able to thrive because the spirit of sabotage did not have the open door of jealousy. This is good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so the spirit of sabotage did not win because there was no open door of jealousy. There was no open door of greed. There was no open door of lust and it wasn't generational. We can rule that out. So because there was no legal right for this spirit to come in, unlike Delilah, right? There was no way the spirit of sabotage was able to sabotage the relationship between David and Jonathan. This is so good, y'all. So let's now go to 1 Samuel chapter 20. Why, why is this covenant friendship so important, right? We need to point everything back to Jesus. So y'all, if you guys read 1 Samuel chapter 20, right, you're gonna understand why this relationship was so important. Why did this covenant friendship have to happen and thrive and take place in the Bible? Why is this the only example of a covenant friendship in the Bible? Why is it important, guys? If you read 1 Samuel chapter 20, we understand right in the previous chapters that Saul was jealous of David and that's why Saul sent the monitoring spirits and all this stuff right to find things out about David so he could kill him right so so Saul was after David to kill him right in 1 Samuel chapter 20 you're gonna read that Jonathan Saul's son actually made an escape plan for David so that he wouldn't die at the hands of his father this is good. Why is this important? Because again, Jesus had to come through the line of David. Oh my goodness gracious. Somebody, you guys need to hit the like button now. If you understand the revelation I'm dropping down, put fire emojis in the comments now. This is straight fire, right? So this covenant friendship had to, had to thrive. Jonathan had to die to pride, die to jealousy, and choose love. Because out of David, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to come. Again, Jonathan didn't know. Jonathan didn't know. But we're sitting here hindsight, realizing this friendship had to thrive. This friendship was ordained by God. So that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could come into the earth, right? Because Jesus had to come through the line of David. That was a promise. That was a word from God through the prophet Samuel. So David could not die. Because of a friendship, a friendship is what allowed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come into this earth. This is good. This is good, y'all. This is good. So it was this covenant friendship with David and Jonathan that saved David's life and made a way for him to become the king of Israel as well. So, so this friendship also helped David's star, David's destiny. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, that's what, that's what I was saying earlier. Some of you guys, you won't elevate until you help your friends elevate. Some of you guys need to take a back seat and cheer and celebrate your friends, even though it's not your time yet. Your time is coming. 
God is in the neighborhood. This is what my friend Toby likes to say. When you see somebody else get, getting blessed, you need to praise God. You need to release a sacrifice of praise because that means God is in your neighborhood and you're up next. So instead of being jealous of your friends, celebrate your friends. Oh my gosh, we need to celebrate our friends. Congratulate them, support them because your turn is up next. But instead, people want to be jealous and then the spirit of, jealous, and then the spirit of sabotage comes in. So we need to choose love, y'all. David could not elevate from being somebody that washes the sheep, right, and fighting bears and fighting lions. He could not elevate from that position to the king of Israel if he didn't have the friendship with Jonathan. This is, this is even convicting me, right? Because if you're somebody that's a prophet and, you know, you're really chosen by God, you don't have a lot of friends and you get used to isolation. The Holy Spirit is even telling me, I want to remind some of you guys that are in a similar situation like me. Don't force the isolation, y'all. There are friendships, even as a prophet, even as someone that's set apart by God, you still need to have friendships. David was set apart. David was anointed and set apart from even his own brothers. But he needed this friendship to elevate. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is good. The Holy Spirit is just flowing right now. Like, this is not me. This is not in my notes, y'all. This is so good. So again, this friendship was important because of Jesus. It was also important for David to elevate, right? And God got so much glory because of this friendship. Because Jonathan sacrificed his, 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 his kingship. Because, because, yes, because Jonathan sacrificed his birthright and allowed David to thrive, right? There was so much glory that was shined through David's life. Again, David gained so many military victories. He established the city of David, which is Jerusalem, and he allowed Jesus to come through his line. So much glory for God through David's life. How did David get to this point? Through Jonathan. This is good. So again, the enemy sees how bright our stars are as individuals. And the enemy does not want us to be in covenant with other people that have bright stars so that God doesn't get any glory. He does not want the kingdom of God to advance in these end times. So the enemy is running rampant, ending friendships, ending marriages. We have to understand that this is spiritual, y'all. It's not a coincidence that the divorce rate is so high. It's not normal. It's not natural. God ordained marriages from the beginning. God wanted marriage. He wanted covenant. But now we're seeing the opposite. Why? It's a spirit from the demonic kingdom to break up God-ordained relationships, y'all. So the enemy sees how bright your star is. He sees how bright your friend star is. And he's going to try and cause animosity with a spirit of sabotage, betrayal. They're speaking bad about you. Random outbursts of fighting and things like that. It's a spirit, y'all. Again, Psalms 55. Remember what David said. Somebody that he communed with, went to church with, you know, fellowship with, out of nowhere, they're turning up against him. It's a spirit, y'all. So let me say this. Let me end this example, right? This is an example in 1 Samuel with David and Jonathan where the spirit of sabotage lost. It took an L because instead of Jonathan being jealous, he chose love. He chose the fruits of the spirit and sacrificed himself and his kingship and his birthright for David's glory, for David's star. And you're going to see some of you guys are, well, well, it's not fair because Jonathan died. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you keep reading, you're going to read that Meshibosheth was Jonathan's son, right? And David ended up, you know, killing everyone from Saul's house died except for Meshibosheth. So later on in 2 Samuel, David said, is there anybody from Saul's house that I can bless? This is good. This is going to encourage somebody. Is there somebody from Saul's house that I can bless? The only person that was left was Jonathan's son, Meshibosheth. Meshibosheth was crippled. He was lame. He was poor. He was dirty. He was down bad. David said, hey, isn't this the son of my best friend, the friend that sacrificed his life and his kingdom for me? So David took Meshibosheth, Jonathan's son, and gave him a seat at the Lord's table, gave him back the inheritance of the land. Yeah, I think Meshavishas repossessed the land that Saul had at that time. The, the family land, David also gave him land. He gave him a seat at his table as a king. So some of you guys are saying, well, it's not fair because Jonathan died. Again, we need to understand this is spiritual. It's not about 
about us, guys. I even talked about in the beginning that the spirit of sabotage came in my own life because it was generational, right? Generational curse, generational blessing. Because, because of the covenant friendship, the next generation, Jonathan's son, reaped generational blessings. He ended up being seated at the king's table for the rest of his life. Right. So again, it's not all about you. You're doing things for the next generation. These friendships, these connections, these partnerships is for the next generation. Y'all, you need to be careful who you're marrying, who you're dating, because it's going to affect the next generation. The Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The partnerships, the collaboration. Oh, my gosh. When you collab with these certain certain groups that are ordained, that are God ordained. When God tells you to go collaborate with these people, right, it's going to unlock generational wealth. So, y'all, we need to understand that these covenant relationships, friendships, connections are ordained by God. And they're going to unlock generational blessings, generational wealth, divine prosperity, y'all, divine prosperity. We cannot let the spirit of sabotage win. Do you see? Y'all, this is such a good teaching. So this was an example of where the spirit of sabotage lost. So let me just end it by saying this. So when two individuals that have high levels of glory connect, the enemy is mad and he's shaken and he's looking for ways to disrupt the friendship, to disrupt the friendship. Now, let me give a little testimony, right? So my friend, right, she's my girl. You know, we pray together, fast together. We went to a conference together. Like, this is really my sister in Christ. And I know she's from God. Like, I just know she's from God. Randomly, last month, we got into an argument. And I was so blindsided by it. Like, I got so many false accusations. She said, Joanne, you do this, you do that, you're too this. Just so many complaints about me. And she basically said she didn't want to be my friend. And I was, I was hurt. I was like, God, did I do something? So I went into a fast. And I was like, Lord, if I need to repent for something, let me know so I can repent. Because she was saying all these things that I did, right? Come to find out, I go into the fast. That's when I get this revelation of the spirit of sabotage. And that's what Prophet Olin also told me. My mentor, he said, Joanne, this issue with your friendship, it's, ge it's generational. It's the spirit of sabotage at work. And by God's grace, by prayer and fasting and us talking, we overcame, we overcame the spirit of sabotage. And I want to tell you guys that me and this, me and my friend, it's a covenant friendship. Why? Because we went to, we went to a worship night together. And at the end of the worship night, the pastor said, if you want to be used by God in this generation, if you're a young person, you want to be used by God. Right when he said that, we made eye contact. We're like, oh, we're running to the altar. So we ran to the altar. We were the only two people out of, you know, the many young people that were at the altar. It was only us two. We went on our knees. And we held hands like this. And we were holding hands at the altar praying, God, use us, use us. That's a covenant. So we made a covenant at an altar. And when the enemy saw that, he got mad. Because I'm telling you, me and my friend, we're fine. I'm telling you, the way God is going to use us is crazy. Right? So the enemy was so mad that he allowed, he used the spirit of sabotage to ruin our friendship. And even my friend, when she was, you know, saying all the things that I did, she was even saying, I'm just confused on how we got here because I understand we made a covenant like I just don't know where this came from it's a spirit even she was confused because it's a spirit y'all and I just want to say for my friend it wasn't she didn't have an open door it was generational you know like prophet Olin said but again guys we cannot let the spirit of sabotage ruin the relationships that God is putting together in this season I'm telling you your relationships are going to help you elevate. Your relationships are going to help you unlock divine prosperity. Your relationships are going to help you find favor. Come on. He who finds a wife obtains favor from the Lord, right? We all know that verse, right? So, men that are watching this, you need to be careful who you're dating. Don't go out dating Delilah and talking to everybody because they're going to take your glory. Oh my goodness gracious. Somebody needs to hear this now. There are people that the enemy has assigned to come and date you and, you know, they want to flirt with you and all that. Deep down, they're coming to take your glory and destroy your star, destroy your destiny. I need to share this now. During the fast in May, I had a dream. There's some man at the gym that I go to and I already know he's not from God. Like, he's just so, he has a lot of issues. But God revealed him to me. I had a dream. I was looking on my phone. I, in the dream, I, looked, I woke up and I was on my phone in the dream. And I saw a notification from the man, the man from the gym, his Instagram. He sent me a DM. The DM said, 
what is the secret of your anointing? I can't make this up. I, I, I'm not being, I literally had a dream of this man from the gym that I knew something was off. God revealed to me and said, Julian, the reason why this man is flirting with you and all these things, even though he's 10 years older than you, just a weirdo. He, as this man is doing all these advances trying to flirt with you, why is he doing it? Spirit of Delilah. He was coming to take my anointing. In the dream, he sent me a DM saying, where is your anointing? How are you able to prophesy? Hey, hey, this is spiritual, y'all. Again, even the people you're dating, you need to discern them because it's spiritual. The enemy is sending the spirit of sabotage, the spirit of Delilah, the spirit of sirens now to disrupt relationships. This is a warning. So we need to be praying and fasting and asking God to reveal people's hearts and their intentions. You need to listen to your discernment, y'all, because I knew something was off about that man. I knew it. And then he got exposed. Not once, but three times he got exposed, right? But I'm just saying this example because it was literally what Delilah was doing to Samson. So again, guys, I'm not making this up. People think I just like to talk. I'm chosen by God. There's a special glory on my life, and people know it. The enemy knows it, so he's sending all these useless men and useless spirits to come disrupt my relationships. I'm not going to let him win, right? So this whole series, Demonology 101, is warfare. We're learning how to fight in the spirit. Okay, y'all, so I just gave you, you know, the definition of the spirit of sabotage in Psalms. We looked at a scenario where the spirit of sabotage won with Samson and Delilah. We saw where the spirit of sabotage lost with David and Jonathan. Now we need to ask ourselves, what is the key to winning the war? What is the key to winning and conquering the spirit of sabotage? Defeating the spirit of sabotage from the enemy. How are we going to defeat this spirit? We saw it with David and Jonathan. We have to love one another with a pure heart. A pure heart, y'all. Again, when you look at Samson and Delilah's story, because Delilah was so quick to turn on her husband for money, we know that Delilah didn't really love Samson. It was probably lust. It was probably, she just wanted the notoriety of dating or marrying Samson, right? She didn't really love Samson. As opposed to Jonathan, as we read, it kept saying he loved him as much as he himself. He loved David. You can even read at the end of chapter 20, Jonathan actually kissed David, right? And, you know, in the Bible times, this is not no pride. It's, not, it's none of that stuff. It's literally just out of love. He kissed David, right? So, y'all, this is a friendship out of love. So how are you going to defeat this spirit? It has to be love. Love has to be at the center. Your heart has to be pure from both sides. You and your friend, you and your husband, you and your wife, you and whoever. Whoever you're in a God-ordained relationship with, both of you guys need to purify your hearts and remain in love, in love, in love, right? Because the enemy takes advantage of the things in the natural, right? So he manipulates the truth. So let's say, yeah, we're not perfect people. Sometimes in friendships, we fall short. You know, sometimes we're not the bestest of, bestest of friends. I could have done this better. I should have done this, right? But the enemy will manipulate your shortcomings and you falling short in the friendship or relationship so that the other person can say, oh, you're a bad person. I hate you. All, you know what I'm saying? Manipulating the truth, contorting the truth to fit the agenda of the spirit of sabotage. Does that make sense, y'all? So we need to remain in love and, and have a pure heart, oh, guys. We need to have a pure heart. We need to be praying, give me a pure heart, oh God. Do not cast your spirit from me, y'all. We need a pure heart. This is the only way we're going to conquer this spirit, y'all. Because if you do not genuinely love your brothers and sisters, right? Jealousy comes in, greed, you're threatened by them, sabotage, all of these things start coming in. The only way that these covenant friendships can flourish is if you respect one another. This is good. If you honor the covenant, right? And if you remain in love. Again, God does not play about covenants. Once you make a covenant, it's hard to break it. That's why a lot of us are in generational curses and all these things. Because we need to break the covenant by prayer and fasting. That's how strong covenants are. So when you make a covenant, God honors that and he does not play about it. So you and your friends need to be spiritually mature and realize, girl, we made a covenant. Like, there's no reason why we should be fighting. That's what happened to me and my friend. We said, bro, we literally made a covenant. Like, this is so spiritual. We're not going to let the enemy win. And that's why today I have a testimony of where the spirit of sabotage lost. And I'm telling you, me and my friend, we're going to come in the future and we're going to give that testimony. Because it was so much warfare, y'all. It was crazy, right? So you need to remain in love, y'all. Remain in love. And let's go back to Psalms 55. 
to get another tactic on how to defeat this spirit, y'all. So we're going to circle back to Psalm 55. This is so good. I just love how we went for a full circle, y'all. The Holy Spirit just be eating. Like, I, I can't make any of this up, y'all. I can't make any of this up. So, Psalm 55, let's read verses 16 through 19 and then verse 22. So, you know, David was just saying how, you know, my friend betrayed me and all this stuff. So, verse 16 says, As for me, I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned from old, who does not change, he will hear them and humble them because they have no fear of God. And then verse 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken, right? So come on. So again, when my friend came to me, when like we were literally in warfare and she was like coming up against me with all these accusations, I could recognize that it was a spirit. So I went into a fast and I said, God, what is going on? If I need to repent, like what's happening? God revealed to me is the spirit of sabotage. So what was my warfare before me and my friend actually talked and resolved the issue? Prayer and fasting. That's what David did here. It didn't talk about a fast, but what did David do? Verse 17, evening and morning and noon. He cried out to God in prayer, crying out to God to fight against those that are opposing me, fight against the spirits that are against me, right? And then even said in verse 22, cast your cares on the Lord. So I was so betrayed. I was, I was hurt. I was like, bro, this is my girl. Like, why is she up against me? I went to God sad, bro. And, you know, God does not play about his, his people. So if you're coming to him crying and you're in right standing, he's going to vindicate you. He's going to vindicate you. So you need to be praying. If this spirit is in operation in your life, it's an operation in your marriage, it's an operation in your relationships, your friendships, partnerships, you can't get jobs, you can't, you know, collaborate with people. If you see this spirit at work, in places where you know God's hand is there, you know God wants you to do this thing, you know God wants you to be in a relationship with these people, but things keep falling out, you need to pray. And what did I do? I prayed and fasted. That's double ammo. That's why I keep saying, we need to fast, y'all. We need to fast. So, so y'all, prayer and fasting is, is the way you're going to defeat this spirit. Again, God is going to give you the victory. Because when you pray and cry out to God and turn down your plate and sacrifice and, and humble yourself before God, he's going to take your sacrifice, right? And he's going to vindicate you. He's going to vindicate you. He's going to put every enemy to shame. He's going to cast out that spirit of sabotage. He's going to give you revelation on how to defeat that spirit. You know what I'm saying? How are we going to give the spirit of sabotage another L? How are we going to defeat all the tactics and all the useless things the enemy's trying to do in this season? We're going to pray, we're going to fast, and we're going to remain with a pure heart. We're going to ask every day, God, purify my heart. If, if you feel yourself getting jealous, if you feel yourself getting mad, if you feel yourself being a hater, you need to pray. You need to pray because once you have that feeling against your friend, the spirit of sabotage is going to come. You need to be praying if the spirit is in operation in your life now. Serious prayer. Break the altar of sabotage. Break the covenant with sabotage. Break everything. Call on the angels to go search and destroy every evil altar, every altar of sabotage. That's what we need to be doing, y'all. Prayer, warfare prayers. And I'm going to encourage you guys, you know, do some of this prayer at midnight, right? Because 3, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. Is the, is the last watch. That's the most powerful watch for warfare. So I would encourage you to also pray at those times as well. But this is the key. How are we going to defeat the spirit of sabotage? You're going to have a pure heart. You're going to repent daily. You're going you're gonna to stay in love, have the fruits of the spirit. And you're going to be praying, praying, praying until that spirit goes. And even when it's gone, you need to keep praying. Because again, what does it say in the word? When one spirit leaves its house, it's going to come back with seven more that are worse than that spirit. So you need to be on the defense, y'all. Warfare is not all oh, things are happening and now I'm going to pray. You need to be praying before the physical things start manifesting here on earth. You get what I'm saying? You need to be praying before the physical manifestations because all of this is spiritual. Again, but because again, guys, before things happen in the natural, they've already happened in the spirit. So me and my friend's argument was already happening in the spirit with the spirit of sabotage. Then it physically manifested in, in our friendship on earth. You get what I'm saying? And because I didn't know it was generational, because I didn't have any revelation of the spirit, I wasn't praying. 
But now you guys have revelation of this spirit. So you need to be praying, y'all. Pray, pray, pray. Okay, y'all, so that's the end of the episode. A very powerful teaching on the spirit of sabotage. Again, I can bet money that a lot of people have not heard about the spirit, but it's in operation right now in the body of Christ, and that's why the Lord had me do an episode on this spirit. So I need you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with somebody. You need to share it, y'all. To, to fellow believers because this spirit is so slick and it's operating in so many people's lives and they don't even know, right? But God is so merciful. He's showing us and revealing how we can defeat this spirit in the name of Jesus. So guys, this was such a powerful teaching. Um, so like I always do, let me leave you guys with two songs before you know I officially close the episode. So y'all, the first song I'm gonna leave you guys with is Pray For The Homies by Tommy Zuko. If you don't know Tommy Zuko, I don't know what you're doing. Tommy Zuko is the one that's saying, um, no pressure. Look how God don't bless you. Hey, wonder why I'm feeling extra. No pressure. Every Christian that's in the R&B space, you know that song. No pressure by Tommy Zuko. So this is another song by him. Pray for the homies. So right, instead of fighting with our friends, instead of fighting with people, we need to pray. Pray for people. Pray against the spirit of jealousy. Pray against the spirit of sabotage. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for your friends to be elevated because once they're elevated, yours is coming. Yours is right around the corner. So we need to be praying for our homies, y'all. So guys, we need to be praying for our homies. You feel me? So this is such a good song. It's R&B, rap vibes, you know. He's like he's like that Southern Cali vibe. So like Nipsey Hustle, Don Kennedy, like just, just fire, y'all. The Christian artists are really eating. So that's the first song I'm going to leave you guys with. The second song I'm going to leave you guys with is Yahweh Sabaoth. Yahweh Sabaoth. When I was praying and fasting about, you know, the issue with my friend, I was singing this song, y'all. Yahweh Sabaoth. Who is Yahweh Sabaoth? That is God, the God of angel army. So it's another name for God. Yahweh Sabaoth means the God of angel army. So when you're singing this song, you're going to declare it and you're going to be singing so that the angels of the Lord can go and destroy and dismantle and disintegrate every evil altar, every altar of sabotage, every altar of jealousy, every altar that's ruining your friendships, your relationships. You're going to be saying this song as warfare. So this is a warfare song. This is not a song to play with. God is going to vindicate you as you praise and worship him with this song. Yahweh Sabaoth. You're literally calling on the Lord of hosts and the host of angels to fight on your behalf, to fight every demonic spirit that's coming up against your relationships and your friendships and your partnerships in the name of Jesus. So guys, Yahweh Sabaoth by Nathaniel Bassey is straight fire. I feel like everybody knows this song. If you don't know the song, now you know, and it's very powerful, right? So we need to be listening to this song. Um, and yeah, guys, so those are the two songs I have for you. We're officially at the end of the episode, so I need you guys to like, comment and subscribe share this video um make sure you follow me on instagram and tiktok at faithandfavor.min also join the discord link will be in the description box so yeah guys i hope you guys will join the next fast in july july 16th through the 18th that's going to be our next three-day fast for the season of divine prosperity and i've talked about it a bunch in the last fast but the second half of 2024 it's, it's going to be scary for a lot of people. You want to be found on the right side of history. And God is calling the body of Christ to repent and fast and purify our hearts so that God can move and we can be distinct like the land of Goshen. There will be a distinction. In the second half of this year, from July until December, there will be a distinction. And you want to be found in the spiritual land of Goshen. So we need to be repenting and fasting. So please join the fast. Um, next month if you want to get the emails about faith and favor and all of that stuff join the discord and also sign up for the email list link is in my description box it's faithandfavor.info you're going to hit that put your full name and email address you're going to get all the emails all the homework all the things about the fast all the things about faith and favor and yeah guys i'm super super excited with what god is doing through this ministry y'all like there's just so many things coming up and like i'm just so excited it's overwhelming because there's so much to do right but God is going to give me the strength. It's not by my own strength. It's by his spirit. So I'm going to get all these things done. But I'm so excited to share them with you, y'all. The second half of this year is going to be fire. It's going to be fire because we're going to be on the right side of history. So, you know, I love you guys so, so much. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week.
pray, 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 you know, guys, seek God, dwell in his presence, you know, just like Moses, dwell in his presence so that the glory of God can shine through your lives, you know. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.